Hi boys and girls, it's an extra special episode of my show this week. Spending five minutes with me in my boudoir is none other than my very good friend, the broadcasting legend, Sir Peter Spencer. Thank you so much for having me on the show, truly. And indeed, calling me Sir Peter Spencer, thank you for promoting me. Of course I'm promoting you, or more precisely, your book. Ah, the extract. Now, you've retired to Cornwall following an illustrious career as a political correspondent with Sky News, haven't you? Yeah, and for that matter, I also worked for the Daily Mail, the Express and the Sun, so you could say that I slipped my way to the bottom, really. Um, so you worked for the Mail and the Express and yet Sky still wanted you. Still? The Mail, the Express, Sky. I mean, really, they're all basically the same thing, aren't they? What do you mean? I mean, they're all news and current affairs media, of course. Yeah, you yeah, well, I suppose they are, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had been hoping to get the wonderful Sir Patrick Moore on my show, but he couldn't make it for some reason. So instead of the sky at night, they've got me the night at sky, Sir Peter Spencer. Well, yeah, except that I don't actually work for Sky anymore and I have never been knighted. Oh, they usually get it a bit wrong, Peter, as you'd know if you'd been watching the show regularly. And in any case, we mustn't let the facts get in the way of a little clever wordplay, must we? I thought you'd know that with your tabloid experience. <laughs> yes, indeed. Freddy Star ate my hamster. Gotcha. Get it? <laughs> Though... I don't understand why you call yourself Sir Peter if you've never been knighted. No, uh, Trudy, I do not call myself Sir Peter. It is you. Well, maybe it isn't, maybe it isn't. But we must get on. We've only got five minutes, you know. <laughs> why? Why? Why what? Well, why have you got... <laughs> I've got all the time in the world. Why only five minutes? Because that's how long we've got. It doesn't have to be, does it? It doesn't have to be what? Well, it doesn't have to be just five minutes. I mean, why not make it a bit longer, like, say, 20 minutes? What, do five shows in a row, you mean? Well, <laughs> Julie, I do salute your mathematical acumen, but I wasn't actually thinking in those terms. I was simply thinking one show lasting 20 minutes. But we've only got five minutes, you know. Yes. But why? You have got an inquiring mind, haven't you, Peter? I like that. But at this rate, we'll have no time to talk about your book. Ah, yes, the extractor. The extractor, yes. Do you know why the air is clean no matter what room I'm in? Uh, as Bob Hope said when asked if he wanted to be buried or cremated, surprise me. It's because I'm an extractor fan. Yes, yes. More clever wordplay like the title of my book. The title of your book is Wordplay? Uh, the extractor, think of the X Factor. The X Factor? What's that? <laughs> well, um, truly, it's that television show that everyone on the planet, apart from me and it would seem you, has actually seen, you know, Simon Cowell, Sharon Osbourne and so on. No, nope, never heard of them. Well, as you so unrelentingly point out, we've only got five minutes, perhaps we'd better get on. So, tell us a bit about your book then. Well, it's a uh, series of whimsical short stories, satirical and a little bit cheeky, but quite kind about the everyday lives of Cornish folk. So it's not about your career as a political correspondent then? No, that's my next book, uh, which is the political memoir, Swamped Westminster Sucks. But in the case of the extract, it had just been in my head for a long time. Oh, just like me and alpacas. Dreamy, aren't they? But tell me about this biography of Sir Patrick Moore you'll be writing. No, truly, it's about politics, so there is no mention at all about Sir Patrick Moore. It is political memoir. Go on then, give us a good anecdote. Well, I mean, only enough, I mean, there was that moment in the States 
when uh, the United Nations General Assembly, uh, when Gordon... Gordon Ramsay? Uh, no, 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 truly, truly, it is still about politics. Gordon Brown? Who? Uh, uh, Gordon Brown, truly, the last a British Prime Minister. Oh, of course, I knew that. Mind you, it's a relief to know there won't be any more, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, and Gordon uh, was about to do his stuff for the United Nations, and he took me aside and he said, Peter... <laughs> and your book will be full of stories like that, will it? <laughs> and you never even know, I might get a chance to actually finish some of them. Now, tell me your anecdote about Sir Patrick Moore. Sir Patrick Moore. No, this is about politics. There are no anecdotes of any kind, any shape or form, whatever, about Sir Patrick Moore. Oh. The way you keep talking about him, I thought he must be a good friend of yours. No, truly. I don't keep talking about him. It's you. Well, maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't. But we must move on. We've only got five minutes, you know. Yeah, time is all to torture. As you keep telling me, my dear. In your vast experience, Peter, is it really true that all politicians are just lazy, self-serving, money-grabbing chances without an ounce of integrity between them? No, truly, of course not. I mean, look, some of them are perfectly selfless, devoted, hard-working, slavishly almost, uh, in the cause of improving the everyday lives of ordinary folk. Are we still talking about politicians? Yes. I mean, at the top of my head, I can name three of them. And how many politicians have you met? Well, about 2,564. Is Boris one of them? <laughs> You've heard that one too, have you? And no, I mean, is he one of the three? Well, well no, I can't say I sing about him exactly. I do, quite often. He looks a bit like an alpaca, don't you think? Uh, yes. With all your experience, what's your take on Boris, Peter? Well, there is quite a nice funny story about Boris, as it happens. It was, it was at the Olympic opening ceremony and he got into a bit of a huddle with Helen Mirren. <laughs> Very good! <laughs> and I heard that he's hoping to become an MP at the next election. Yeah, and very widely tipped to be the next leader of the Conservative Party, although it does have to be said that an awful lot of that tipping does come from Boris himself. <laughs> of course, there's no reason why he should step down as London Mayor, is there? Or stop writing his newspaper column. I mean, none of the three is really a full-time job, is it? And aren't they looking for a new chair of the BBC Trust? I'm sure Boris could fit that in as well. He's not Superman, you know. Well, of course he's not. <laughs> Who's ever seen Boris flying through the air in pantyhose? Superman isn't real. Are you a bit confused, Peter? There's no shame in it, you know. Not these days. You're a bit keen on Boris, aren't you? Not really, no. Back to your book, The Extractor. Tell us a bit more about it. Well, and truly, as I was saying, it is a, a series of short stories, whimsical, satirical, a little bit on the saucy side, but actually pretty much kind to the local folk. And, and it's got a running gag that permeates the entire script that concerns the old farmers with the old trackers, and they heave them over the cliffs, and then they go to the insurance... Oh, it seems we're out of time, but I think we've all learned something today, especially you, Peter. You oughtn't to go around giving yourself imaginary honorific prefixes. And talking of Mohammed Al-Fayed, see you next Tuesday. And remember, keep it light. If you've been affected by any of the issues in today's programme, then you ought to know that the world doesn't revolve around you and that you're really terribly insignificant. Hope the rest of you enjoyed this week's show. Leave a comment down below. Please remember to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I mean, go on nearly there, aren't we? Yeah. Awesome. Didn't take a minute. Piece of piss. <laughs>